What's up, everybody? Welcome to Neon Mushroom. Welcome back if you've been here before. I'm Adrian, and we have another EDH slash Commander gameplay video for you guys today. A few quick things. One of the players we have is from a collaboration I did a few episodes ago. It's Mr. Calvin Traeger, or his online uh, handle is Trigger, T-T-R-G-R. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can maybe go subscribe to him if you like Destiny content. And then we also have a returning player from the first video we uploaded to this channel a long time ago, like nine or 10 months ago. And he's bringing back the same deck. So anyone who watched that old video, you get to see him playing the same deck again. That's all you guys should need to know before the video. So let's jump in and look at some opening hands and what decks everyone's gonna be playing. Okay, we're gonna start with myself. I'll be playing my Yuriko the Tiger Shadow deck. I keep a 7 card hand with Prismatic Vista, Bloodstained Mire, Misty Rainforest, a Frexian Walker, Ingenious Infiltrator, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and a Misdirection. Next up we have Calvin Traeger, which is probably a name you're going to want to remember moving forward. He's playing his Golos deck, he also keeps a 7 card hand, with Mana Crypt, Regurin Triome, Hollowed Fountain, Teferi's Protection, Clever Impersonator, Chandra Awakened Inferno, and Sorn Grim Nemesis. And then returning to the channel, we have Steve playing his Anala deck. He keeps a 7 card hand as well, with Command Tower, Drown Catacomb, Temple of Deceit, Swamp, Riptide Laboratory, Is It Signet, and a Stony Brook Banneret. And last but definitely not least, we have Aiden returning to the channel, with his new Oban deck, one of the new commanders from the Zendikar Rising precons. He keeps a 7 card hand with Baziju, who shelters all, Wooded Foothills, Forest, Cultivate, Haro, Keeper of Fables, and Admonition Angel. I really hope that's how you pronounce the name of this card. I win the die roll, so I'm gonna go ahead and lead off. I'll play Bloodstained Mire, and then I'll play Frexian Walker, and just pass the turn over to Calvin, who's gonna draw, and he'll play a tapped Regular and Triome, passing the turn over to Steve. Steve's just gonna lead on Temple of Deceit. He's gonna scry to the top with the Temple's trigger, and pass to Aiden, who's just gonna play Wooded Foothills and try to pass to me. I have an action, I'll lose a life fetching with my Bloodstained Mire to get Sunken Hollow into play tapped, then I'll untap and draw my card for turn. I'll play my second fetch land as Prismatic Vista, and then I'm going to go ahead and crack it straight away, going down to 38 life, to get Basic Island into play untapped. Then I'll head into combat, and I'm going to send my Frexian Walker right in at Aiden, before damage but after blocks on Ninjutsu and Yuriko. I'll put that trigger on the stack, and I'll reveal Morphic Pool off of her trigger. I'll redeploy the Frexian Walker, passing the turn over to Calvin who's going to draw his card and put Hollow Fountain into play tapped, just passing the turn right back over to Steve. Steve's going to draw, play a Swamp as his land for turn, and then play Is It Signet, passing the turn to Aiden, but before he can, Aiden's going to fetch, go to 38, and put Temple Garden into play tapped. He's just going to drop Stomping Ground tapped as his land for turn and pass to me. After untapping and drawing, I'll deploy that Morphic Pool I picked up off Yuriko last turn and turn both creatures sideways at Aiden. When no blocks are declared, I'll ninjutsu an ingenious infiltrator in place of the Frexian Walker. We have some triggers after damage. I'll trigger the infiltrator twice to draw two cards, and then Yuriko twice to reveal Treasure Cruise and Muta Vault. I'll add those to my hand and deal eight to everyone at the table but myself. I'll redeploy Frexian Walker, discard, and pass the turn. Calvin's gonna draw and then play Command Tower as his land for turn, and follow that up with a Mana Crypt. That's going to put him up at 5 mana, so he'll be able to deploy Golos Tireless Pilgrim, his commander, and that hasn't entered the battlefield trigger, which is going to allow him to search his library for a Zagoth Triome, put it into play tapped, and he'll pass over to Steve, who will untap, draw a card, and play a Drowned Catacomb, which comes into play untapped thanks to the basic swamp, and play Stony Brook Banneret. At that point, Aiden's going to untap, draw his card for turn, he'll play a basic forest as his land for turn, he's going to tap out and play Cultivate, getting one basic for his hand, and then one basic into play tapped. After that, he's got nothing else, so he's going to ship the turn right back over to me. I'll untap and draw my card for turn. I'll go ahead and play that Muta Vault that I picked up off of Yuriko last turn, and get right into the red zone once again, all at Aiden. With no blockers declared, I have another Ninjutsu. This time I'm going to do Ninja of the Deep Hours in place of the Frexian Walker. After damage, we actually have a ton of triggers. We'll trigger the Ninja of Deep Hours, we'll trigger the Infiltrator three times, and then we'll trigger Yuriko three times, revealing an island, Sensei's Divining Top, and a Mist Syndicate Naga dealing 4 damage to everyone at the table but myself. Then we'll deploy Sensei's Divining Top, we'll redeploy the Frexian Walker, we'll move to discard, and we'll pass the turn over to Calvin. After on tapping and drawing his card for turn, Calvin's going to tap all of his mana and play Chandra Awakened Inferno. Looking at the board, he decides he needs to minus 3 the Chandra to wipe everything on the board, hold for his Golos, 
And after doing that, I'll rezone my Yuriko instead of letting it hit the grave, and we pass the turn over to Steve. But before we can, Steve's going to cast Anticipate, and after making his selections and bottoming two of the cards, Steve will go ahead and untap and draw his card for turn. He'll just drop Riptide Laboratory as his land for turn, then I'll tap three mana to play Urza's Incubator. He'll name Wizards, obviously, and with nothing else, he'll ship the turn over to Aiden, who draws a card, and then deploys his commander, Oban Moldiah Ancestor. At that point, he'll drop a land for turn that'll be Bountiful Promenade. This will trigger the Oban. He'll move to combat and hit me for four with his land. He didn't realize it doesn't have Vigilance. He catches it in a moment. Then I'll flash in Snapcaster for one mana thanks to the Urza's Incubator. I'll untap, draw my card, and play Misty Rainforest as my land for turn. I'm going to go ahead and crack that Misty Rainforest, dropping down to 33, and I'll get a basic island. Iden then remembers to tap his land because it does not have Vigilance. I'll tap two, and I'm going to play Limduel's Vault. Now with this Limduel's Vault, I find what I want in the top five cards in my library so I don't have to pay any life. Then I go to combat, and I attack Steve for two. I decide not to use any ninjutsu, and then we pass the turn back to Calvin, who rolls for Mana Crypt and loses. After that point, he'll draw a card for turn. He's going to go ahead and tick up that Chandra and light the board on fire. We have one global Chandra emblem. After that, he'll tap for four mana, and he'll play Clever Impersonator. We decide to let it resolve, so he actually copies Chandra, and he's going to tick it up again to make another board on fire emblem. After that point, he'll shock in Breeding Pool, dropping to 23, and pass the turn to Steve. Steve will play Basic Mountain as land for turn after taking two to the Chandra Emblems. We'll move to Aiden's turn, who also takes two off the Chandra Emblems. He plays a Keeper of Fables, a Basic Plains as his land for turn, triggering his commander, and he heads into combat. He's going to use that Basic Plains as a 5-5 to swing at Chandra, and he'll swing at me with his commander for 5 damage. We'll go to Blocks, and Calvin will block with his Golos, and then we'll head to Damage, the Golos will die, I'll take 5 Commander, Aiden will draw a card, and we'll move to my turn. I'll take 2, and then Miracle Temporal Mastery off the top of my library. Calvin will respond with Soul Shatter, and then I'll Swan Song the Soul Shatter. After the stack resolves, Calvin will be left with the Bird, and I'll be left with an extra turn. At that point, I'll head into combat and attack Steve for 2 with Snapcaster. With no blocks, I'll Ninjutsu in Yuriko. We'll go to damage, he'll take 1 Commander, and I'll reveal Ornithopter off the top of my library. I'll play the Ornithopter, and then we'll move to my next turn. I'll take two again and draw a card for turn. Then we'll tap my island to activate Mutavolt, and we'll head into combat, attacking Steve with Mutavolt and Yuriko, and Aiden with Ornithopter. With no blockers declared, I'll tap for black, and I'll Ninjutsu and Skull Snatcher in place of Ornithopter, exiling two cards from Aiden's graveyard. Then we have three Yuriko triggers. I'll allow the first one to resolve, dealing two to everyone off Familiar's Roots. Then I'll spin the top of the next trigger on the stack. After rearranging, I'll reveal Shakasima Student, That'll deal four to everybody, and then I'll reveal City of Brass off the last trigger. I'll play the City of Brass as land for turn, redeploy Ornithopter, and pass the turn to Calvin. First things first, Calvin wins the die roll for Mana Crypt so he doesn't take any damage. He plays Mana Confluence as his land for turn, and gets into the red zone with the bird at me, dropping me to 22. Then I'll minus three Ashandra to wipe the board again. He'll move into his second main phase, and I'll tap for two, three, and four mana. He's going to play Kaya Ghost Assassin. That resolves, so he's going to minus 2 the Kaya. Everyone's going to discard a card except for Calvin, who will draw a card. After that point, he has no additional play, so he passes to Steve, who takes 2, and then plays Grixis Panorama, and then we move to Aiden's turn, who takes 2 and drops to 6. Then he's going to tap 6 mana to play that Angel he kept in his opener, and I'll play Basic Plans as land for turn, exiling Calvin's Kaya. After that, he's going to trigger the Oban for the landfall that he made, and he's going to head into combat, but before he can, all murderers cut his commander, so he can't come at me for a ton of damage. That's going to resolve, but first Calvin will play Tefiri's Protection to phase out. After that, we'll get rid of the commander, and Aiden will get to go to combat. He'll attack me with the Keeper of Fables. I'll take the damage, and then the Keeper will trigger. Aiden will draw a card, and before he can pass the turn, I'll flash in Snapcaster Mage. I'll take two at my upkeep and then draw a card for turn. I'm going to go ahead and activate Mutavolt again and go into the red zone in combat at Steve for three damage. With no blockers declared, I'll Ninjutsu and Yuriko for Snapcaster yet again, and then we'll go to damage. With the Yuriko triggers on the stack, I will spin my top, and then with the first Yuriko trigger, I'll reveal Personal Tutor. This will deal one to everyone but Calvin as he's phased out, and then I'll spin my top again with the next trigger on the stack. After rearranging the cards, I'm going to reveal Marsh Flats. That'll deal zero damage to both of my opponents. After that point, I'll play Marsh Flats and pass the turn back to Calvin. After phasing back in, Calvin will roll for Mana Crypt and win the roll so he takes no damage, then I'll draw for turn. 
he's going to tap for two, three, four, five, and six mana to play his second six drop Planeswalker for the game, Soren Grim Nemesis. He'll immediately use the minus X ability to deal six damage to the Angel. This will kill the Soren, but the Angel also dies, so Kaya re enters the battlefield. After re entering, Calvin will minus two the Kaya. We're all going to discard a card, and Calvin's going to be able to draw a card. Then he's going to move to activate that Chandra. He'll minus it to kill the Yuriko. I do have to rezone the Yuriko here. And then Calvin's going to play Wooded Foothills as his land for turn. Before he can pass to Steve, Steve will crack the Grixis Panorama to get Basic Island. And then we will move right over to Steve's turn. He'll take two damage off the Chandra Emblems, play a Reliquary Tower. And then an interesting move here, he actually plays his commander, which you don't see him do a whole lot. We'll move to Aiden's turn, who takes two, draws a card, and plays Sacred Foundry tapped as his land for turn. He'll try to pass the turn to me, but I'm going to crack for Swamp before he can. At that point, I'll tap for black, and I'm going to go ahead and spin the top. After rearranging, I'll untap my lands. I'm going to take two damage and draw a card for turn. I'll play Tainted Isle as my land for turn, and then we're going to activate Mutavolt, and we'll get into combat. I'm going to attack Calvin for two damage, and with no blockers declared because he has none, I'll Ninjutsu in Yuriko. We'll deal one commander damage to Calvin, and then we'll reveal Commandeer off the top of my library to deal seven to everyone but me, killing both Aiden and Steve. I'll try to pass the turn, but first Calvin wants to fetch for Ketria Trium, dropping down to 14, and then he's going to go ahead and start his turn. He does have to roll for Mana Crypt here. This time, however, Calvin does lose the die roll, dropping down to 11. After that, he'll draw a card for turn, and he's going to use Kaya's minus two. I'll discard a card, that'll be a Familiar's Ruse, Calvin will draw a card. Then he'll use the Chandra to make a third emblem. After that, he's going to play Basic Forest as his land for turn, and then he'll tap for 7 mana to cast Golos, paying for its commander tax. After that, the Golos resolves, and he searches his library for Field of the Dead, which comes into play tapped. It is active, so he makes a zombie. He tries to pass the turn to me, but before he can, I'll flash in Snapcaster Mage, and I'll use it to flashback Murderous Cut to cut down the Golos. I'll exile 4 lands to do so. That all resolves. Before we can pass the turn to me still, I'm going to go ahead and spin that top, dropping down to 10 because I do have to use my City of Brass to do so. And after rearranging, I'm going to go ahead and untap. I'm going to take three to all three Chandra Emblems and draw a card for turn. Now I'm going to proceed to make a line of pretty questionable plays here. I'll play Polluted Delta as my land for turn, and then I'll fetch, dropping down to six to get a Mystic Sanctuary. I'll choose not to use its ability. Then I'll tap for three, and I'll transmute and muddle the mixture. I'll be able to search my library for a copy of Cyclonic Rift and add it to my hand. After doing so, I'll tap for blue, and I'll play Personal Tutor. This will let me search my library for a sorcery and put it on top. I will get Temporal Trespass. After doing that, I'll tap my Senses Divining Top to draw a card and put the top back on top of my library. And I will draw that Temporal Trespass, and then I'll tap 3 and delve 8 to cast the Temporal Trespass. And Calvin has no responses, so I will be able to take an extra turn after this one. After that all resolves, I decide it's time to head into combat and I'm going to turn my Snapcaster sideways at Calvin, and he blocks with the zombie token. They are going to trade, and with nothing else to do, I'm going to move to my next turn. I'll take three off of the three Chandra Emblems once again. I'll play Mutavolt as my land for turn, and then I'll tap it to play Sensei's Divining Top. Then I'll tap for blue, and I'll spin my top. After rearranging my cards, I'm going to go into combat, and I'll attack Calvin for one. He'll take the damage that'll trigger Yuriko, and I will reveal Dig Through Time off the top of my library, dropping Calvin down to two. Now I'm sure most of you more experienced commander players already know what's going to happen on Calvin's next turn here, but instead of narrating it, I think I'll just let Calvin say it himself. So basically, in this game has come down to, if it's an odd number, I win, or he wins, and if it's an even number, I win. So good. Brrr. Oh! Ah! On tap, upkeep, okay. yeah! <laughs> that was great. That's Draw the card! <laughs> Do nonsense, pass! That game was pretty sweet, but I punted it like three separate times. Here at the end of the video, I wanna go over how everybody's decks performed and maybe talk about some key interactions that maybe weren't so obvious, maybe were obvious to some of you, I don't know. I just kinda of wanna summarize the game. We'll start with myself. Normally we start with the players who had the least amount of impact in the game to get that over with, and then climb up to the players who like won or had the most impact in the game. We'll go backwards because of the things that happened at the end of the game. Starting with myself, I actually punted this game like three separate times because Calvin ended the game with a Mana Crypt trigger die roll. And if he won the die roll, he won. If he lost it, I won because I didn't have a trigger for Mana Crypt on my upkeep. I had three Chandra emblems I couldn't interact with at all and I was at less than three life. My deck can't really gain life, 
So that pretty much would have just ended the game right there, deciding on the die roll. The die roll would have been the deciding factor. Now what I could have done differently here is two turns before my final turn, there was a turn where I attacked with my Mutavolt and Jitsu and Yuriko. Now when I had that turn, I played my land for turn on my main phase one as Tainted Isle. And if I had not done that, I could have played Mutavolt as my land for turn in my second main phase after ninjutsu and Yuriko and pulling it back to my hand. This would have given me the damage necessary to kill Calvin before getting to that crazy last turn uh, Mana Vault die roll nonsense. Another thing I could have done was not transmute for Cyclonic Rift. That was just a mistake. I miscounted my mana. I thought I'd be able to single target Cyclonic Rift, his zombie token, and get him with Snapcaster and just hit him in the face and Yuriko. That then I would have taken my extra turn to pretty much guarantee the kill, but I miscounted my mana. And I could have even repaired the issue right then and there by just not attacking the Snapcaster so he couldn't trade with the zombie. And then my next turn I could have bounced the zombie and then got him a Snapcaster and Yuriko, spun my top, revealed Dig Through Time, and dealt exactly enough damage to kill Calvin. That's no fun though. The game ended in a die roll. I think that made for a much more entertaining video. Plus, anyone who doesn't watch the end part of the video gets to, like, really just trash me in the comments, hopefully, for being an awful Magic player. Next up, I want to talk about Calvin, because he won the game. For anyone who didn't realize what was happening, he's playing a Goal of Super Friends deck. Now, his Goal of Super Friends deck is the commander doesn't really matter so much. He's just trying to play the most optimal five-color commander to allow him, to enable him to play five-color Super Friends. He picked Golos because it fixes his mana. You'll notice that he used the Golos for the first time to get Savai Triome which is just fixing his mana. The only other land he plays that doesn't fix his mana is Field of the Dead. We'll have a list coming for you guys like really soon, an entire video on the deck as a matter of fact, because um, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of Calvin. But he's playing Super Fair Magic, which a lot of us appreciate here. Like I know Mr. Chris Shavers, I can't wait to get him in a game with Calvin because they both play very fairly in the game, Magic the Gathering, EDH Commander, whatever. Other than that, he just played a lot of really cool cards that game that you don't see a ton in Commander. Chandra Awaken Inferno, I don't know how much we see that, but we don't see a lot of Kaya Ghost Assassin or Soren Grim Nemesis, so that was really awesome to see. Then we have Aiden, he was playing Oban, Moldiah Ancestor. He was playing like maybe a turn or two, too slow. What his deck was doing was actually pretty impressive. Just that, the landfall trigger for Oban, it's amazing how fast that lets you get off the ground and start to beat down. Uh, he had the Keeper of Fables, which was allowing him to draw cards. I think if the game was just a little bit slower, he could have gotten a foothold and been a real contender. And then Steve, Steve's playing a combo deck. I really want to get a video out on his deck because it's interesting. We're also working on it. It doesn't have the most, um, it's pretty budget right now. We need to update the mana base. He's just now buying some cards to really power up the deck. But one thing he does a lot is he'll have us focusing on each other because his deck doesn't look like it does anything while he's setting up the combo. And then while two of us are like slugging each other in the face trying to end the game, he'll just combo and end up winning the game out of nowhere. That happens a lot more often than you'd think. And he was actually a little bit closer to winning that game than you might think he is. Dual Caster Mage and um, Flicker, what's the name of that card? It's the, um, it's Ghostly Flicker. Because of his, what's the name of the uh, card, Anala. Anala enables a lot of weird combos because you can make a token copy. And I won't get too far into that, but that's what his deck's doing. It's like an all-in combo deck. So the Urza's Incubator that he cast did help me cast the Snapcaster a whole bunch, but had the game gone his way, that he, what he would have done with the Incubator would look a lot more devastating than what I did with Snapcaster, just casting it for one a whole bunch. That's all I have for you guys today. Like I said at the beginning of the video, go check out the description. You can subscribe to Calvin's channel if you're into Destiny content, it's called Trigger. And expect to see a lot more of Calvin moving forward for reasons we'll get into eventually. That's all I got for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you next time.